is the meaning of our existence? Why we are alive? What for? Along with this passage, let us just examine also. What is my the meaning of my existence in this world? Just think about it. Is it to study, 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 earn, earn money and build a big building and house and live comfortably with so many kids, both children, right? Boys and girls have so many cars, so many wealth. Is it that you want? Or actually what is your aim in life? Why? We have to spend lots of time in lab, in the library, in the institution, in the hospital, uh, say, uh, college, colleges. For what purpose? If we don't have much time, if it is seminar and workshop, we can do uh, no? two-way traffic. Now it is only one-way traffic. I am talking, you are listening, unfortunately. But maybe some other time if we, can, we can have some interaction. So it is a challenge and I always think some people think that it is waste of time going to church. Now, what is religion? What is the difference between Christianity and religion? Anybody? Religion can be any religion, Hindu, Muslim, Islam. There will be hundreds and thousands of definitions. But one thing that uh, I want to tell you is the striking difference between Christianity and other religion is nothing but religion is an attempt to know God. For example, Buddhist enlightenment, isn't it? Religion is an attempt to know God, to know about the mystery of God. But Christianity in Christianity, it is not an attempt to know God, but God Himself come and search for us. And He became human being in Jesus Christ. And He lived among us. God first loved us. First John, isn't it? He came to us. So that is the difference between religion and Christianity. But today our message is, I, don't know, I don't want to divert so much from there, the passage. Well, um, I just divided this passage into few, few points. So the first point is Psalm 40, 49, verse 5, 6. If you look at here, the psalmist talk about trusting in the wealth. That is the first point. Trusting in the wealth. How, how much money in your bank, in your bank account? When my bank account is down, I feel insecure. Right? As long as bank account is full, we don't bother to pray. Right? Here the psalmist is talking about trusting in their wealth. It wealth can be money, property, whatever, isn't it? So likewise, the psalmist is talking about those rich people who trust in their wealth rather than God. But Bible repeatedly says that your wealth is just limited. First trust in the Lord. That is the message. Repeatedly the Bible is very clear about that. So the first point that I would like to draw your attention is how many of you and how many of us are trusting first in our wealth or property rather than God. If it is if we are not trusting in God, then maybe something has gone wrong according to the Bible, not according to Pilarson. Okay, what is riches and wealth? If you look at the situation of contemporary Northeast India, 
Manipur, I am from Manipur. Uh, my friend Lakshmi Gal is from Andhra. Andhra also situation will be almost the same. And I can see uh, some of you, most of you are from Nagaland. And I don't know from other states. Whenever you go to Northeast, what do you see first time? You tell me. One of the thing is now the road is so congested with full of cars. From where this car comes? You tell me. When I was young, Manipur road was wide enough. There was no much vehicle. Now full. From where all this comes? Is it they work very hard and buy the vehicles? Big question mark is there. Lots of buildings are coming up. From where? So, this is the contemporary. People are competing. Our house should be higher than our neighbors. My car should be bigger than my friend. Isn't it? And degree of the tricky BAB. ASD and then most of whatever, no, MD, if you are a medical doctor, MD and then this could be from London or somewhere, no? So competition is going on. So much competitive examination is are going on, isn't it? What for? The question is what for? What is your, what is the meaning of your existence, my existence? Here I am not against the wealth. We need it, but the Bible is clearly mentioning here. Why should I fear when evil days come? Verse 5. When we get deceived around me, those who trust in their well and boast of their great riches, no man can redeem the life of another or give to God an answer for him. So, here, like the people of Israel who were very rich and they exploit the poor people, there are also exploiters in our society even today. Okay, from Mizoram, Zion is there, I forgot. Situation in Mizoram also almost maybe the same and his friend, right? So, once upon a time, tribal society did not measure their life based on their wealth, isn't it? But today, your life value and my life value is measured with how much you have, how much I have. And we don't bother about much. Whether my neighbors are suffering, whether my friends are going through a hard time, that is not so much important. And we don't so much care about community for the social activities. Our life become more individual. For example, in 2014 and 2016, in Pondicherry University, we organized cultural festival. So many people criticized, saying that it is waste of time. So I am. I just ask myself, why we are so much into our work, research, and this and that, thinking for my family only for my relatives and friends. No much time for the society. Nagas, so to say, were very much uh, industrious like other tribals. They were so much social minded people. But today, in this 21st century context, we have become so individualistic and we want to amass the wealth more and more, more and more. But the Bible says that that is not the main purpose of living in this world. We need wealth, we need money. But the ultimate purpose of our living is not that one. Isn't it? It is God, it is Jesus Christ. But we have divergence. Okay, time is not there, so we move on to the second point. Verse 7 to 9. Uh, Psalm 49, 7 to 9 talks about money can do many things, but it simply cannot buy an escape from the grave. So, in short, I just give a summary. If 
you have money, you can do anything, isn't it? The other day I was uh, trying to talk to one of the assistant professor of our university from Nordis. I was surprised to found this series in USA right now. How she went? She went by flight. Who paid for her? Maybe by herself or somebody. Without money, how can she go to the US? Isn't it? So it's very important. With wealth, money sent by our parents, we are studying here. Isn't it? Without that, we cannot do. We can do so many things. But there is one thing our wealth, money cannot do. What is that? That cannot save you and me from the grave. On the third day, Jesus resurrected with the power of the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the Bible promised that we will live forever with Jesus Christ. We have to conquer the death, the grave, life beyond grave. But our mindset is only on this earth, worldly things only. I am not saying that we should not focus on worldly things. We should do it, we should earn. But we, th we think that whatever we have amassed, collected, earned, saved in the bank, some maybe ministers, so go, ministers of Nordic people, five years, ten years, fifteen years, where they are keeping their money, buying lot of lands in Delhi, in Hyderabad, in their own states, isn't it? You just see the road condition of, uh, for example, northeast in the Timapur. I was there last two weeks. The road is so no, spoiled. But ministers are enjoying in AC. So this is the thing. This is the reality. Money can do so many things, but there is one thing which it cannot do is, you, money cannot save you and me from the grave, from death, we cannot, uh, money cannot save us. That is why the psalmist is reminding us again, instead of trusting on the wealth, or we can also say, instead of trusting only in your education, in your job. Now, I don't want to mention the name of anyone, those who are already employed, they have a job security, they have a bank balance, they will get pension, most probably, no? But remember, that is only for short time, isn't it? So the Bible is reminding us that we should think of something beyond that thing which is available in this world. Okay. So money can do many things, but that is limited. Limitation of the material wealth. That is what from this passage we learn. Now move on to the third point. Uh, verses 10 to 14. For Psalm 49, 10 to 14. And one of you, if you can read out again, along with this uh, third point, Psalm 49, 20. One of you, please stand up and read. Psalm 49, verse 20. Anyone? Those who have Bible. Why? The 
The Bible is very clear about it. Humans are like animals that perish, like beasts that perish. Why? Because the most powerful person in the world at present is Donald Trump. Am I right? And who is next? I don't know. Who is the richest man now? Is it Bill Gates? I don't remember now. I was observing some of those great politicians like uh, Indira Gandhi. She was assassinated by his own uh, bodyguard, right? Uh, such a very powerful person. She died like an animal. Benazi food over here and there and she came back for campaign and she was shot dead or bomb blast or whatever, right? Rajiv Gandhi was killed in bomb blast in South India, Sri Perambutu, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Abraham Lincoln, he was assassinated. John F. Kennedy was assassinated. See, they have all bulletproof, isn't it? And they have bulletproof and so many protection and this and that, but they die like an animal. So like that, the rich people also will be like that only. The Bible is clear about it. If they don't understand the word of this, what riches means. So that is what the psalmist is. But here, we should not misunderstand that uh, I am negative or against to wealth. Alright? We need it. But we while in the process of earning money, so to say, for example, we forget God. That is the same meaning. We forget God many a time. How many of you have seen a uh, bundle of money? I think you must have seen in bank, no? I don't know in your home how much money you have, you may have. By looking at money sometimes, we just we are just carried away, right? We do that, by that we will hold it and go to heaven, no. But the Bible says that no, no, no. Whatever we have in this world, you are not going to carry anything when you go to heaven, right? We will leave everything behind. But still, greedy, our ministers, so this number one, right? They may not like to hear. For them, one lakh is nothing. They are talking about crores and crores in terms of crores. So we talk about corruption, demonetization, all these things, right? That I don't want to explain now, don't, there is no much time. So those rich people who don't know about the meaning of wealth and God, God and wealth, giving more importance to our wealth, property, money, then that person is just like a beast who is going to die like an animal. That is what the psalmist is talking. Okay? So, I want to say so many things, but time will not permit me to stop there. But the last point, the last point is Psalm 49, 15 to 20. 20 you already read out. Here, the Bible verse, if you read these uh, verses 15 to 20, you, you will know that God, it is God, not the wealth, that will redeem our lives from the grave. Isn't it? So, let us examine ourselves this evening. Where we are? What is our attitude toward our wealth? When we talk about wealth, we cannot think about our qualification. Is your qualification is going to take you beyond the grave? No, we can examine. And some doctors, uh, MPBS doctors are here, but don't feel bad if I say. When doctors sick, get sick, they also like human beings, isn't it? Doctors also die. But they want to save the life of him. So what I mean to 